We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Wikibon's production of HP Discover. This is day two, we're here live in Barcelona. We have a special segment now, Vish Malshan is here. He works in HP Storage Group. We're going to unpack some of the things that are going on in Flash. And also Pete Robinson is here. He's, with, he's an IT practitioner with Exact Target, and we're going to talk about how he's applying Flash and what impact that's having on the business. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dave. you guys. Thank you. Um, actually, Pete, I want to start with you. Tell us about Exact Target. What, what's, what's the company all about? So we are a, a di digital marketing company. We provide a platform through our private cloud for marketers to reach out to their customers via a multitude of uh, methods, email, social, web, uh, and, and many others. So you help uh, brands sell stuff, really, yes. ultimately, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, Vish. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the, the three-par all-flash storage approach. You guys chose not to go out and acquire a, a company. Um, you chose to pa pack it, do, do it in three-par itself. I talked to Ashok last night, and, uh, and he was saying to me, explaining sort of why that was, but I wonder if you could sort of reiterate that. Sure, Dave, it uh, be my pleasure. So, from our perspective, flash is disruptive. And, and depending on your starting point, that either means a new storage architecture, or incorporating flash as a media. And uh, most have had to adopt a new storage architecture uh, to accommodate flash, and this unfortunately proliferated uh, a fragmented complexity, silo, adds additional complexity, and, and requires compromises, right? When you bring a new storage architecture, it always requires some sort of compromise as that architecture matures. And so if one could adopt Flash in an existing architecture uh, where Flash becomes a new media, yet still deliver the Flash acceleration that is required for a new media, that would be ideal, right? And, and I think the challenge is it's hard to do. It's hard to bring an existing architecture and bring a brand new disruptive technology and not suffer from compromises, right? And, uh, and I think that's one of the things that the approach we took with 3PAR because customers can avoid the risk, they can avoid trade-offs, and they basically can get a continuum of data services, uh, and, and they can adopt Flash when, uh, when they're ready. Okay, so you're, when we talked about this last summer, you really emphasized, hey, we got a full stack. We started developing this thing in you know, the early 2000s, and, and we've hardened that, that stack. We're going to apply that now to Flash. You see a lot of the Flash play players don't have a stack. I mean, you know, TMS is a good example. IBM sure. will use the SVC and they'll use that stack. Uh, you, you see, you know, EMC uh, with its acquisition, trying to build up its stack. All the all flash guys, you see yeah. what Violin's trying to do with Symantec. And so, so obviously the stack and a robust stack is a, is a challenge. So that was your big bet, is that Absolutely. you're going to, now the obvious question is, okay, but can you bring the same value proposition as uh, the startup guys. Yes. With regard to performance and you know, IOPS and, and latency and, and scale. Yeah, and I think, Dave, the, the, there is a difference between a traditional storage architecture and a modern storage architecture like 3PAR, right? And you know, early on in our offering, we actually been through a couple of media transitions. We've been through a couple of technology transitions, and the robustness of the architecture allowed us to bring Flash in as a media without the compromises. Now, Flash is different, there's no doubt about it, and we do handle the Flash differently. We recognize when it's in the system, and we operate with it differently. <laughs> okay, now Pete, we were talking last night, you and I, and you were sharing with me uh, that you came to Exact Target. you were the first storage admin at Exact Target, uh, and you had, I think you said you had no experience with, with 3 par. This is before Flash was the, the big trend. Right. And so share with our audience what, what you found, what you discovered, what the experience was like. Sure, um, you know, when I came on board, um, went through the same, same uh, learning curve that a lot of customers do where literally our training was a two hour morning session and then we went to lunch. 
the I, I honestly I, I I was looking at our SE going seriously what what else is there to you know come on we it's not that easy it can't be that easy and you know we come back from lunch and we were provisioning and managing arrays after lunch and you were able to uh, manage a lot of storage uh, pretty much off the bat right without yeah a lot of yeah I mean having you know I, I had a storage background so once you understand the the, <clears throat> the terminology and the concepts it's it, it's very easy to start applying it. Uh, you know, to give give you kind of a reference point, um, our um, when I was hired, we had one individual managing over two petabytes of three par, and he was not a storage guy. He was a developer that became a sysadmin who became a storage admin. You know, he he grew with the company as we we grew, and he he was really learning as he went along. So when we came on when I came on board, I was really, you know, initially shocked how how number one how easy it was. And number two, how how one one individual could manage an environment this this size. Yeah, we were talking about last night. I, I think I've seen some data from I think it was Gartner that, that the average is well under a petabyte. Uh, and I think I was sharing with you guys. I was at a customer council last week, and one of the folks on the council was very proud of the fact that they were managing a petabyte yeah. per person. You're saying it was over two yes. per yeah. person. Even though I've said publicly that I, I think. Petab you know, petabytes per person is kind of a funny metric. It's an easy one to, to, to track, and, and but it doubles every yeah. you know, 18 months. Volumes is probably a, 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 a better indicator of complexity, but nonetheless, it's hard to... Well, and, and you mentioned yeah. volume. I mean, you look at change right. You know, how many, how many requests are coming in? Yeah. And that, that really is that indicator of um, how efficient can you be. You know, today, we do most of our provisioning via scripts and we're extremely efficient at it. You know, we're starting uh, next year, we're going to be automating our, our provisioning even further to the point where we're literally push button deploying our applications using the interfaces that 3PAR provides. Yeah, so 3PAR has is, is, always been kind of the gold standard of simplicity of, you know, high-end storage. I mean, that's, that, that's been well understood. Okay, so talk about your adoption of, of Flash. So this summer, 3PAR announces this uh, HP, the all-flash array, um, when did you bring that in? Were you an early customer? Talk about that a little bit. Um, so sure. So we we had a chance to to get an early look at it this this summer before Discover, and we you know in in our history looking at three par, what we found is that the arrays behave remarkably similar to each other. You know, as every new release comes out, you know it's you know faster CPUs, bigger pipes, you know more more drives. But, but from a tech performance perspective, from a scale, scaling that performance, it's a very linear. And the only difference really is, is how high or low do I start and where do I end up? But that line is, is, tends to be very, very similar across the different product lines. Um, so by the time the 7450 had come out, we had already made a, a fairly large investment in, in uh, flash drives on the P10,000 series. So we already had a chance to see the three-part flash in, in production. And what we were seeing, again, r really matched what we were expecting from it. We were seeing the, the very low latency on the back end. Um, you know, one, one of the, the, I guess called a catch-22 with 3PAR is the, the benefits that we've gotten from uh, the white striping and the multiple controllers. We've really been able to outlast or out, out drive what a standard hard drive normally handles in a standard storage array. So we were already at that bleeding edge that we, we needed to decide, do we just start buying more and more hard drives or do we look at creating a performance tier strictly on flash? And after, after seeing what the P10,000 was doing, after seeing that that performance tier was not only performing on what, how we were expecting it, looking at a, perform, a truly optimized array running only flash, it, it, it was a no-brainer. So, what were your concerns prior to bringing in the, the all flash array? What were the, some of the things that you said, ah, I'm going to be watching? What were some of the things you were skeptical about? Well, the, uh, the, the one, one thing that we, um, we, we've looked, as we looked at you know, all the different uh, flash vendors out there, the one, one thing that st stands out is um, really capacity at scale. Uh, it's trying, does my application fit into whatever platform that you're selling me. And at 90 plus percent of the, the vendors that come in here, come in and, and try to sell us on flash storage, uh, right off the bat, 
my application doesn't fit on Flash. So when we looked at a 7450, the first question we had to answer was, does my application fit within the footprint that the 7450 you mean, yeah. can I fit my entire yeah. app? The, the, yes. Exactly, the in data. The yeah. the so, you know, Does the my surprise, data set fit into that yeah. space? The, the surprise that I had, Dave, as, you know, as a vendor producing this equipment, I was surprised at the capacity people were putting on these 7450s, right? And I asked customers like Pete and others, and, and their point was simple. If I can't lay out my data, I can't use it, no matter how fast it goes. I need a sufficient amount of capacity to lay out my data. Yeah. So, Paint a picture of the apps that you're, you're using for Flash. Well, so we rolled out, this particular uh, application was a VDI deployment. Um, it was a, a brand new project that we had not deployed VDI before, so there were some unknowns around what the application size was going to look like. We had some good estimates, but estimates are just that. They're, they're guessed based on what we think the application is going to do. Um, you know, as we look at the 7450 use cases, you know, we're looking at doing more with it. You know, we have a, a very large database in a VMware environment that I want, I want to start testing on, on, a, on all flash array, but th that capacity has always been that l really limiting factor. So when, when 3PAR came out with the uh, 400 gig MLC, we finally hit that tipping point in capacity where now my application starts to be more feasible and in fitting into that disk space. That's the, that's the announcement here. Uh, well, no, that, that was a June announcement. That was that was a June announcement. Okay, right. So, so now mean, now they're coming out with the 480 and the 480 920. To nine, the 920. So the the capacity is continuing to increase, right, okay. and as as the capacity increases on uh, these flash arrays, the portfolio that of applications that have a potential to now fit into that size increases as well. So you talked about uh, VDI, and VDI, VDI is always a challenge. I mean, we have other boots or storms, you mentioned sizing, it's really tricky to size VDI. And so what have the results been, the VDI, and I don't want to talk about the database, what, what did you say? Um, it, it was um, exactly what we expected. Um, we've, uh, we've rolled out dozens of three-part arrays over the years with, with really no issues. HP installs it, they hand us the keys to this new array, and, and we go to town provisioning storage. Uh, we had, I believe we had, we had LUNS provisioned off of the array the day that it was installed, and our project, which had an extre extremely aggressive timeline, uh, rolled out actually slightly ahead of schedule. And users are happy? I mean, how's no the issues. performance? I mean. Performance has, has been, um, well, better than expected. Uh, our average service times, we, I looked at it before I came to the conference, we're averaging about 300 microseconds, regardless of what the workload is right now. Okay, and when you think all flash arrays, of course, you do think a database. You mentioned you got a virtualized uh, system. Is it an Oracle database? Or? Uh, we're, we're running SQL Server today. Okay, so you got SQL Server, and you're going you're gonna to put the entire database on an all flash array. Are you doing that today, the, or is that the We're plan? not doing that today. Uh, that's one of the options that we're looking at down the road. Again, looking at the capacity. You know, we have, uh, we have countless, several databases that are tens of terabytes in size. So when I look at a p putting, putting a database that continues to grow, I have to know how much capacity can I grow into before I literally have to move it off to, to something else. Right, okay, and today those databases obviously leveraging spinning disk, yep. right, which is this mechanical bottleneck. So what do you expect to see when you, when well, you move to an all-flash? Well, um, we rolled out, so we rolled out on, on the P10,000s uh, with AO and, and Flash, and what we saw was on, on the back end, we're, we're getting a consistent 600 microseconds on, the, on actual Flash drives across, across the platform, and if you look at the percentage of IO that we're pushing to that tier now, we're now averaging 50% 50, 50 of that IO for my database environment in, in one use case in particular all being driven to that 600 microsecond service time compared to the other 50%, which today sits on hard drives that are running between eight to 15 milliseconds. So if, when I look at my database, I'm getting a, a larger percentage of my IO requests now being serviced from that low latency tier, which is what we would expect. Right, now are, are you going to evaluate other products or have you evaluated other products? We, we have, uh, I mean, the, the um, and usually I tell, tell them the same thing. It, you know, I, er, the first thing I hear is we can do a million IOPS, two million, five million, 10 million. It, 
billion. Yeah, it, it, okay, it I, doesn't matter to me. You know, it, it's more of a, a question of use case, scalability, uh, manageability. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't afford to chase after every little golden nugget out there and create 10 different silos of storage because at the end of the day, when, when we have to come back and now manage that, the complexity is, is what's going to kill so us. So that's, that's the attraction to you, predominantly. Yes. So you're looking for, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the absolute best performance on the planet um, if you can get comparable performance with the stack, Common and services. the manageability, and the same Point same, of the same ease of use. I don't want to compromise. Is that a fair I statement that yes, I, made? I don't want to compromise on the features that I have today. I don't want to. I don't. I. I'm not what looking. Features? What features? What? What are the things that are that, that you want in that all flash array that you're leveraging heavily? Well, today? as an example, you know, we're getting more and more heavy into uh, you know data protection. So snapshots, uh, replication, um, the you know, automated provisioning, all these different things that we're starting to roll out work really, really well when we have that unified platform of, of a 7450 or P10,000 or 7400 where we don't have to spend extra time re-engineering, you know, redesigning that wheel. There's one wheel and it works regardless of where the application sits. What about the cost? Uh, everybody, you know, used to focus on, on the cost. I want to have that discussion because you guys got to pay the checks, uh, yeah. write the checks. So what about the cost factors? Well. Cost per gig is always the first question that, that comes up. But my argument here recently has been that cost per IOP, dollar per, dollar per IOP is becoming equally as important from a planning perspective because you know, if I look at the performance that I need for my application, yeah, I can, get, I can go buy seven racks worth of, of, of spinning disk and get the performance I need, but now my, my performance is where I need, need it and my efficiency is there, but from a capacity perspective, I am hugely inefficient now from a power and rack space perspective. So when I look at the dollar per IOP at a more equal level as the dollar per gig, all of a sudden the, the higher dollar per gig cost on a flash drive starts to really come back in line with what you see with a hard drive. Because of the business value. Now, now, as well, a lot of the data reduction techniques being applied to flash lower the cost. Yeah. Now some of your competitors, Vish, are going to say, well you guys don't have, just take an example of dedupe. A lot of guys are doing dedupe, inline compression, and that's how they're competing right. from a cost standpoint. You don't have some of those features. Well, how do you respond? So you know, Dave, I think several aspects there, right? So first of all, with Flash, you want to be very right efficient. Uh, not only from, um, uh, from a capacity perspective and cost perspective, but also from a media endurance perspective, right? So many of the same wide striping capabilities that we've done, Okay, on the three power arrays, which were predominantly in the back in the past back end disk loaded, that white striping across the controllers and the ports, right, allows us to write very effectively onto the array. Now, the other thing I can tell you, Dave, uh, zero detection. Uh, we use it a lot in VMware environments. That minimized cost. Uh, thin provisioning still, still applies in the flash environment. And uh, for things like dedupe and compression, uh, stay tuned. Yeah. So okay. So but you're comfortable where you are today in terms of your ability from a storage reduction standpoint to, com to compete in the marketplace and you're saying you got more to come. And can you confirm that? I mean, based on your evaluate, independent evaluation of other, other suppliers, HP from a cost competitive standpoint is, is there in your view? I believe so. I mean, we can, we can always, um, I'd you know, my, my former director always liked to say, you know, the first one is always free, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Cost is always uh, you know, a key in indicator of uh, you know, what we look to buy, obviously. Yeah. All right, Jets, we're getting the hook. So thanks very much for coming on and sharing your story, Pete and uh, Vish, really appreciate it. Thank you yeah. very much, Dave, right. appreciate keep you having right us. Nice. We'll be right back after this word. Uh, keep it right there, John Furrier and I will be right back with our next guest. We're live from HP Discover.